they relieved the palms of their branches as the people's palms grasped and then brandished those leafy emblems of both festival and rebellion. These were a people who felt as though they had already spent their second, third, and last chances on zealots, men like Barabbas and that now famous Maccabean. But this Jesus, this new champion, was riding into Jerusalem on a donkey as Zechariah had envisioned him. This king was coming to daughter Zion to take the wicked Roman chariots away from Ephraim. Surely this Jesus was the one to bring God's people salvation. Surely he was the one pictured all across the prophet's hopeful panorama. So they shouted, save us please. They cried, Hosanna, Hosanna. And this Jesus would answer yes to their cry of save us, save us, but not in the way they expected. Hey, welcome to the Sound of Hope House. I'm Pastor Chaz Lauder. Thankful that you are joining us today. It's Palm Sunday, and it's a different Palm Sunday. It's Palm Sunday 2020. Like everything, it's been impacted by coronavirus. So we don't have any uh, little kids running through the Sound of Hope house today with palm branches. But that is the day we historically wave palm branches. What is this all about? If you have some familiarity with the church, or maybe you're kind of faith curious, you're trying to figure things out, and since all these churches are online, you happen to find us, you are in a perfect spot today. We're going to talk about Palm Sunday, what it's all about, and what it means for us. Uh, I want to encourage you, grab your Bible and buckle in. We're going to dance with a little bit of the Gospels today. That's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the first four books of the New Testament. And talk about, really, what's what's... What's the scene all about? What's up with wave and plants? This is weird, right? Well, I'm excited you're here. I want to encourage you, if you listen and worship with us regularly, uh, please, please, please don't hesitate to do your regular offering. Just text the word GIVE, G-I-V-E, to 763-452-9464, 763-452-9464. Um, if you have any questions about giving, you can just email me directly, Chaz at uh, chaslouder at gmail.com. It's chaslouder at gmail.com. I, I want to make it easy for you to support us. Uh, we, we have all of our, our donations supported or are processed through an organization called Tithely, and they help thousands of churches and nonprofit ministries worldwide uh, do their giving. So thank you for those of you who've been giving. If you've never given before, know that the first time you do it, it takes about a minute and a half to sign up. And, and again, safe and secure. And so give with confidence. Again, text the word GIVE, G-I-V, to 763 Four five two nine four six four. Okay, with that out of the way, let's figure out what this Palm Sunday thing is all about, all right? Father, we welcome you. Uh, we thank you for your presence. You are here, as we've sung about in that song. You are our Savior and you are here. And so, Lord, uh, as we look into your word today, speak loud and clear to our hearts. Help us to uh, understand um, who you are, really. Not who we expect you to be, but who you are. Jesus, we thank you. Um, for um, your entry into this world, your time among us, and for your incredible sacrifice that gives us life. Lord, help us to experience that life today. In your name, amen. All right, so uh, a different scene, Palm Sunday. Uh, we call it Palm Sunday. It was just uh, it was part of Passover. Uh, as we read about today in Scripture, you're going to see the word Passover a couple times. And I guess we should start with that. What is Passover? Passover is an old victory that the Jews are celebrating, that our Hebrew brothers and sisters of old are celebrating. Okay, uh, They were slaves in Egypt, and God provided some miraculous divine, um, divine freedom through their servant Moses. He did some pretty amazing things with God's help, and they were able to escape oppression, escape freedom. This is the, the, the pinnacle, the, the last plague in Egypt, and part of it, was getting a lamb, butchering a lamb, painting your your the some of the blood on the doorpost, and this horrible judgment passed over their homes. That's why it's called Passover. Eventually, they are set free from their captivity, and they continue to celebrate the Passover by butchering a lamb and, and having this this meal. And so here's the deal: everybody is coming to Jerusalem in this scene. 
Uh, everyone is already in Jerusalem, um, and they are, are celebrating um, celebrating the Passover. And, and it's, it's a, a long time. It's a week celebration because people have to come and actually purchase a lamb um, or whatever their offering is going to be. And then they need to go to the temple, and then there needs to be all this stuff. So it's a it's a big it's a big deal, and and here is this interesting situation that we have. Jesus at this point to to use our twenty twenty uh, vernacular, Jesus is blowing up. <laughs> People know about who he is because of the things that he has been doing. He has been. Um, um, healing people and preaching and saying all kinds of incredible things. And he just raised a guy a couple cha- chapters earlier. He raised him from the dead. And so this is one of those scenes where someone says to you, like you're watching a YouTube video, hey, did you see that video? Did you hear what so-and-so has done? Man, that is the coolest blogger. That is the most amazing video I've seen this week. It's that, right? It's that without the video. Okay? So um, people are hearing, oh, it's Jesus, Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming. And they know, they've heard uh, about what he's been up to. So as the scene unfolds, um, this is a really interesting thing. Jesus has got some notoriety. He's been kind of this local preacher, but now he's got some more national status because people are starting to come to town. They're traveling. They're hearing more and more about this Jesus guy. And here we come into Jerusalem with his followers. And Jesus does something very Jesus-like, very kind of wild and weird. He says, hey, uh, disciples, I need you two uh, to go and get me a ride. I need a ride. I don't want something fancy. I don't want a Ferrari. I don't want a Corvette or a Mustang or, or an Aston Martin or something something uh, you know fancy. I, I need a Kia. I need a Ford Fusion. <laughs> That's basically what's happening here. He needs a ride into town. He wants to make his entrance, but he's not going to make his entrance with, a, with the way you think. He's not going to be riding on the back of a strong, perfect horse or a war horse. He's coming in on a donkey. This is significant because Jesus, up until this point, even though he's done incredible things throughout the Gospels, he's kept his messiahship, his king identity a secret, kind of on the DL. He's revealed it to a few people. They say, you know, I know that when Messiah comes, um, he's going to set everything right. And he says to the woman by the well, that's me. I, I'm he. I'm the one you're talking about. There's a few others. He does some healing, does some work. He says, keep this quiet. Uh, you know, it's not time yet, right? But this is the moment. The fever pitch has reached. Everyone knows about this. Uh, the, the videos he's been making. <laughs> he, everyone's, it's, he's gone viral, right? There's no videos. I'm just messing around. Jesus comes into town. He's going to make his entrance, but he makes it in a way of humility on the back of a donkey. And if you've ever seen anyone ride a donkey, anyone of a normal stature, um, it's a weird look, right? Because the donkey is little, and so your legs hang over. It's almost like riding a mini bike. It's, it's, it's a bizarre look. And so Jesus is on this, this donkey coming into town. His followers go ahead, and they are like, here comes Jesus, what, what? They've got the, the bullhorns. They're making noise, right? It, they throw cloaks over the donkey's back, uh, and they cut branches, and they start chanting and, and cheering. And so here's the scene. We're going to read a, a little bit of it. In, uh, this is in John. John, oh man, I'm going to lose my spot here, so I'll just do this. John chapter 12. John chapter 12, where you at? Here we are. I, I marked this one. I got it. I got it. I got it. That's Matthew, other book. John chapter 12. And there's something important here, just right off the bat. The next day, the news that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem swept through the city. Do you hear that? Just get that sense. The city is 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 got the hubbub of a city, the walla of a city, and all of a sudden it's like, oh, Jesus is coming! Jesus is coming! It's it's tearing through town. Did you hear that guy? He raised people from the dead. He's been preaching all over the place. Like he he's coming. He's coming. A large crowd of Passover visitors took palm branches and went down the road to meet him. So Jesus has got his crew. But these people cut palm branches and they went down to meet him. And here's what they say. Praise God! Exclamation point. Praise God! Blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hail to the King of Israel. And so this is the New Living Translation. They don't use the word Hosanna, but praise God is the word Hosanna. Okay? It's an important word. It's it's a word that means save us. Save us now. Save us please. 
And notice how that last little piece ends. Hail to the king of Israel. Uh, different translation, different uh, places in the Bible. It says, hail the king of David. Important. So much meaning packed in this little section. I, I want to break it down for you. Um, so, first of all, you got people in town for Passover. We already talked about Passover is a past win for the Israelites, for the Hebrews. And they're celebrating it. They're, there's already a crowd. Um, the news of Jesus comes, and another crowd goes to meet him, and they're waving palm branches. Now, the 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 interesting thing about this is, I, I always had thought growing up this is was a spontaneous situation, <laughs> like oh hey Jesus is coming, I know how we're gonna honor him, let's cut down some palm branches. But this is a regular yearly thing. This is the way that the Jewish people celebrate Passover. They wave palm branches. The palm is a symbol of their national identity. And they are used to singing, saying, and waving palm branches. Uh, it's kind of like, um, you know, it's kind of like a, a sports team. If you have, uh, you're in an area and you, you've got the, the team that has the, the, the hanky of some sort, that has the team logo or mascot or name on it, and they wave it when the team is doing well. It's like that. They're waving palm branches. Hey, Israel. We're the best. This is us. And they're, they're quoting Psalms. Um, this was part of the yearly, the yearly deal, except, except this year. And, it, and it's really, really quite clear. And let me see which, uh, which chapter. I'm, in, I'm now in the book of Luke. I'm in Luke. Mm, let's see. Maybe I won't go to Luke. Maybe I'll go to Matthew again. Let me see. It's just uh, so much. Every author just gives a slight different camera angle. I, I just love it because the crowd spread out their garments. And here's, yeah, this is Matthew 21. This is verse 9. So the crowd spread out their garments on the road ahead of them. Others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. They're basically rolling out the red carpet. This is the royal treatment in verse 9 of, of 21 of Matthew. So 20, chapter 21 of verse 9. Jesus was in the center of the procession. The people were all around him shouting. It's a Passover unlike any other because instead of just waving and getting excited uh, about national identity and this incredible victory, this deliverance that they normally celebrate, this time Jesus is in the center of it all. Uh, it's, it's incredible. And they're directing their attention. They're directing their praise towards this would-be king. It's incredible. He, he comes and he... Uh, shakes up the, the, the normal celebration. And this makes the Pharisees, the, the teachers of the law, upset. In, in the book of Luke, this is Luke chapter 19, same story, same exact story, starting in verse 28. Um, after telling the this, telling this story, and again, he's, telling, he's, he's doing his teaching, right? All this leading up to uh, his entry into Jerusalem. He went down to Jerusalem. His disciples walked ahead of him. You, you've got um, the, the crowds spreading out garments on the road again. But this time, this time, it, it says in verse 40, uh, 40, 39, but some of the Pharisees among the crowd said, teacher, rebuke your followers for saying things like that. If, and Jesus says, if they keep quiet, the stones along the road will burst into cheers. Why are the Pharisees so upset? Because the Pharisees recognize what the disciples don't. These are people who are immersed in, in biblical law, in biblical texts. Um, they know that this is a fulfillment of the prophecy that's found in Zechariah chapter 9. And you'll find this in multiple places in the, in the Bible. Um, we'll, we'll go to the one in, I mean, it's again, which one do you want to you take your pick? Here it is. This is in uh, John chapter 12, verse 15. So again, this is Jesus finds the young donkey, rode on it, fulfilling the prophecy that said, and this is Zechariah 9, 9, quoted in uh, John chapter 12. Don't be afraid, people of Jerusalem. Look, your king is coming riding on a donkey. And it says this right here. His disciples didn't understand at the time this was fulfilled the prophecy. But after Jesus entered his glory, they remembered what had happened and realized that these things had been written about him. So uh, many in the crowd had seen Jesus call Lazarus from the dead, raising him from the dead, and telling others about it. That was the reason so many went out to meet him, because they had heard about his miraculous signs. Then the, the Pharisees said to each other, there's nothing we can do. Look, everyone has gone after him. 
again, I, I think about this scene. And, and my, my big takeaway is people have this expectation of Jesus. They're expecting him to be this king of David, this conquering king. Finally, it's like the guys who um, are big into sports, right? And I say guys, but there's girls too, right? But people who are big into sports are like, this is the year. This is it. We're going all the way. This guy. This guy is taking us to the championship. We're finally going to beat back those Romans. I'm sick of them and their occupation, their dynasty. No, this is the year, and this is the team. You've heard about the stuff they've been doing. They got this guy quarterbacking. He's going all the way. That is the scene, right? That's the expectation. But how quickly those cries for Hosanna, please save us now, turn into cries of crucify. Jesus brought his crew. He brought his team. He brought the cheer squad. Uh, but, but more ran to that crowd, and that crowd swept the whole city. The Pharisees were intimidated. They, they saw what Jesus was implying by his coming into town on a donkey. So, so here we are. That's the story of Palm Sunday. Lots of dynamic going on there. I encourage you, um, whether you are seasoned in the Bible or you are um, just kind of faith curious, spend some time uh, with, with John chapter 12 this week. Spend some time uh, with, with Luke um, 21. In, these, these, uh, in these, these books, you'll find this story of Jesus riding into town. And even if you don't know the details, you can't remember some of what I've even shared, you're going to sense there's this, this interesting tension this is a, it's a true spectacle. It's this moment. It's honestly, it's a political rally in some. As much as it's a, a religious rally, it's a political rally in, the, in the, the, the reason for it is because they're waving these palm branches, this symbol of national identity. They're saying, this is going to be our king. This is the guy. And so this had the Romans' attention already. So when Jesus finds himself days later in front of Pilate, they already knew there's this, this Jewish uprising. Here it comes again. They, they kind of heard of what's going on. Jesus is the center of this Passover, which makes it different. And he wants to be the center of our celebration as we come into this special, special last week of his life that we celebrate called Palm Sunday, called Passion Week, and, and that comes together, climaxes on Resurrection Sunday we call Easter. But here's the deal. This crowd had expectations for him. And just like we have what we call outrage culture today, this is an early example, pre-pre-pre-internet, pre-printing press of the outrage culture we see today. It's a little taste of it. This is like a political rally with one team waving, not red for Republicans and blue for Democrats, but waving green for uh, their nation when there's already a nation that, that occupied the land. This is, uh, and you, you know from our news cycle, you know the incredible tension between parties that exist here. There's that tension. It's like one team waving their flag in another team's face. <laughs> another team's face that already occupied the space. There's that tension that's playing out. But there's also the tension that you've got between the crowd and Jesus. They want him to be their king. And Jesus is come to be the king, but not the king that they expect. Not the conquering king of the Romans, but the king of our hearts. The king who brought peace. As one of the, the gospel accounts say, it says, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed the king of David. Uh, glory to God in the highest heaven. The same words that were, that's in Matthew. The same words that were stated at the beginning of Christ's life when he was born, here they are stating again. He's bringing not a, a kingdom of war, but a kingdom of peace. And he wants to bring that kingdom of peace to your life today, right now, in this moment. But we have different expectations. We, we sometimes treat Jesus as the genie. We just got to rub, he's got to rub the Bible the right way. The genie pops out and we, he grants wishes. That's not the Jesus that, that we, we serve. Jesus expects us to, to come to him in, in humility the way that he came riding on that donkey. If you feel like you've got questions today about who Jesus is and the relationship that he desires to have with you, it's clear in Scripture that God sent Jesus to, to bridge this gap. God is perfect and holy and he's here and, and, and we are human and broken 
and, and sinful here. How can we approach a holy God? That was the whole point of God sending Jesus to us to bridge that gap. We're going to continue to talk about that, especially as we celebrate Palm Sunday, especially as we celebrate Easter next week. But my encouragement to you is if you are curious about who Jesus is today in this moment, don't wait another second. You can pause this video, come back to it later, but, but visit this website. It's simple. It's not affiliated. I don't get any, any uh, bonus for sending you there, but it's, it's important. It's Jesus.net. It's information about who Jesus is. There's questions to answer. That you, that there's answers to your questions too as well. Um, spend some time at Jesus.net. This crowd turned on him. Just like we have outrage culture today where one celebrity is the best and suddenly they write a tweet that's insensitive. Suddenly they post an insensitive comment on an Instagram or an Insta story and suddenly the world turns on them and they are outcasts. Their careers are ruined Think of that, think of the tension of politics, inflammatory things being said. This is the guy who's going to save us. It's not the Romans. This is the guy. You've got that on one hand. And then you've got this guy, this miracle worker that people recognize, this preacher, this teacher, suddenly on the national scene. And he is going to be the one to deliver, just like the Passover they're sending. And we'll talk more about that next week. Just like that deliverance, here's this new guy, this king, and David's line that he is going to be the, the one to save us. That was the expectation, but when that expectation wasn't met, offense was taken and that crowd turns. You, you see, as you read the story, you read the comments, the Pharisees weren't happy about this. The Pharisees were, were spreading like, hey, we, we got to do something about Jesus. We got to take out not Jesus only, but we got to take out Lazarus too because he's proof of who Jesus is. And so... As we come to Jesus, let, let us not come one moment praising and the next mo minute cursing. I, I don't want to take my cues from this crowd. I don't want to hey, take that mob mentality that as Jesus comes into town, there's the hubbub, there's the stir, there's the proclamation, there's the excitement, but then the crowd starts to turn. And in the same fashion, that that sweeps across the crowd because people love a spectacle. That's why, you know what, we, we talk about the news the, every week and how the news is scaring us, right? The news has important stuff to say. This is not me just dogging the news, right? But, but one news it, it, you know, source says something pretty inflammatory, pretty um, truthful, but in the worst possible headline. And another one says, well, we gotta up the bar. This is the same thing. It's like, did you hear what Jesus said? There's one thing, did you hear what Jesus said? It's incredible. And then two days later, did you hear what Jesus said? One is a, is a a question of excitement. The other is a question of indictment. So here we are. That's the story of Palm Sunday. People coming with their expectation, but Jesus not meeting their expectation. He came to be king, not king on a throne yet, not a conquering king, but king of our hearts. And my encouragement for you today is as we sing songs, all the songs we've sung today is about Jesus' presence, Jesus' kingship, Invite Jesus, as this song says, to be the king of your heart. Visit that website I said, Jesus.net, but invite him to be the king of your heart because as this song says, you will find that he is good. Let the king of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink the rumble, he is my song. Let the king
is holding on to me. God is holding on. When the night is holding on to me, God is holding on.
can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord? 